the way to give Dharma teachings. Contemplating all the great benefits of teaching the Dharma. The conditions for generating immense benefits through teaching the Dharma. If one is not attached to contamination such as material gain, respect and fame, but teaches the Dharma solely for the sake of sentient beings, then the benefits are immense. As a Dharma teacher, if you are not attached to material gain, not teaching for the sake of money, then your motivation is relatively pure. Of course, monastics still need to accept offerings. It doesn't mean to abstain from eating and drinking or to have no material support. Instead, it means not clinging to material gain. No matter there are offerings or not, I can do well. This attitude is called not clinging to material support. Neither should we cling it to respect and fame. With such pure bodhicitta, the benefits of teaching the Dharma for sentient beings are immense. There are two conditions for generating immense benefits through teaching the Dharma, pure intention and pure content. The teachings you impart must be the authentic teachings of the Buddha, free from any scattered thoughts and personal opinions. When teaching the Dharma, we shouldn't have selfish motives. Once there is a selfish motive related to fame and gain, the teaching is no longer pure. Moreover, we shouldn't talk recklessly. We should align with the Buddha's teachings. We shouldn't deviate from the Buddha's teachings and the four Dharma seals. If you talk about worldly matters and forget the four Dharma seals, then it deviates from the Buddha's teachings. The teachings must be correct. Teaching the Dharma for the sake of seeking fame and gain is actually selling the Dharma and turning the sacred activity of teaching the Dharma into a worldly activity. As a Dharma teacher, one should have a pure motivation and wholeheartedly think for the benefit of sentient beings and the sacred Dharma. When teaching, we should be precise, align with the Dharma, and never talk recklessly. If the teachings don't align with the Buddha's words and the four Dharma seals and go against the essence of Buddhism, then it is not imparting the Buddha's teachings, but rather imparting the Mara's teachings. In the Brahmajara Sutra, Bodhisattva vows, it is stated, If a Bodhisattva, for the sake of material gain, chooses not to answer when they should, distorts the teachings of the sutras and the Vinaya without considering the context, or slanders the three jewels, they commit a minor offence. That's why it's risky to be a Dharma teacher. If a Dharma teacher has the motivation of seeking a fame and gain and decides to impart teachings and answer questions based on whether there are offerings or not, then it is wrong. In the book A New Account of Tales of the World, there is a story about Guan Ning and Hua Xin who were friends. Once, when they were working in a vegetable field, they found a piece of gold. Guan Ning treated it like an ordinary stone, paying no attention to it, while Hua Tsing became very interested and kept the gold aside. Another time, when they were studying it together, 
a high-ranking official passed by in a carriage wearing a fancy hat. Guan Ning continued to study, while Hua Zing dropped his books to watch the fun. So Guan Ning divided the seat and said, "You are not my friend." What he meant was, "You are too secular." Since even virtuous people in the world can have no attachment to fame and gain, as monastics who propagate the Dharma, it's even more important for us to have a pure intention. If your intention in teaching the Dharma is pure, then the disciples will also listen to the Dharma with a pure intention, and the benefits they receive will also be pure. Therefore, they will also selflessly propagate the Dharma. Why has the Dharma spread more and more widely over the past three thousand years, and why has it never been extinguished? It's because the intention is pure, the teachings are pure, and they serve sentient beings wholeheartedly. This is truly achieved. Not just a slogan like "serving the people wholeheartedly." It's useless to shout slogans. The Buddha, Buddhasattvas, and the great masters who have received the Dharma lineage have truly achieved this without any deceit. Contemplating the benefits of teaching the Dharma according to the scriptures. Teaching the Dharma can bring about five wonderful results. Number one, the effect similar to the cause. In the Sutra on generating the supreme aspiration, the Buddha said to Buddhasattva Maitreya, "Maitreya, the so-called uncontaminated Dharma giving is to teach the Dharma without seeking a personal gain and honor." Dharma giving brings about twenty great benefits. What are these twenty benefits? Now let's briefly read the commentary from the Song Dynasty translation of a compendium of Buddhist doctrine. Number one, through teaching the Dharma, one can attain the mindfulness that clearly remembers the Buddha's teachings. You will be able to remember the Buddha's teachings. You are the first to receive the benefit. Number two, through teaching the Dharma, one's own mind can enter the sublime path. As you continuously teach, you will be able to put it into practice. That's why I encouraged them to propagate the Dharma yesterday. The more you teach. The better you will understand. Then you will be able to put it into practice, thus entering the sublime path. Number three, through teaching the Dharma, one's mind can attain enlightenment. Dependent arising is inconceivable. If you impart Dharma teachings correctly, your mind can attain enlightenment. Number four, through teaching the Dharma, one's mind will become strong and uphold the roots of virtue. If you selflessly impart the supreme and priceless Dharma to others, you will also benefit, and your mind will become strong and uphold the roots of virtue. Number five, teaching the Dharma can increase wisdom. And number six, through teaching the Dharma, one can attain the wisdom that transcends samsara. The effect similar to the cause of teaching the Dharma is the development of wisdom. The ornament of the Mahayana Sutras states, through teaching the Dharma, one can attain the discriminating wisdom. The effect of liberation. Teaching the Dharma can reduce greed, anger, and ignorance. 
Less greed will lead to contentment with fewer desires. Less anger will lead to compassion. Less ignorance will lead to the attainment of right view. By freeing oneself from the three poisons, one will often have inner peace and not be disturbed by external maras. This means that we should serve others selflessly. When disturbed by maras, we should generate a positive intention to teach the Dharma selflessly. When teaching the Dharma, you are not only teaching the students, but also teaching yourself. The one who benefits the most is yourself, as you will grow faster and not be disturbed by external maras. The above is the effect of liberation, of teaching the Dharma, liberation from the bondage of greed, anger and ignorance, as well as external maras. The environmental effect. When expounding the Dharma, you will receive blessings and support from the Buddhas in the ten directions. How wonderful! When you impart Dharma teachings, the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas in the ten directions will bless and support you because you are spreading their authentic teachings. Each Buddha and Buddhasattva has great compassion and Buddhacitta, so they all hope that we can hear the authentic Dharma. A Dharma teacher is the spokesperson of the Buddha who is fulfilling the wishes of the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas. So, how can the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas not bless and support you? All the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas in the ten directions will bless and support you. When expounding the Dharma, the eight legions of Devas and Nagas will protect you. The eight legions will certainly protect you. There are many Dharma protectors. Moreover, when expounding the Dharma, heavenly beings will help you radiate a majestic aura, making your appearance radiant and powerful. Among the eight legions, the heavenly beings rank first. When expounding the Dharma, your karmic creditors won't have the chance to disturb you. This is because the Dharma protectors are protecting you. By expounding the Dharma, you will become magnetic. Your family and friends will never break apart, and you will be appreciated by virtuous people. This means that those with roots of virtue will appreciate you because you impart the authentic Dharma to them. By expounding the Dharma, your words will carry great weight. The listeners will value your words and dare not transgress. This means that your words will be influential. Since you often give Dharma teachings, people will be willing to listen to and respect whatever you say in your daily life, believing your words to be correct. Your words in daily life will become authoritative and influential. This is indeed the case. If you are good at expounding the Dharma, then no matter what you say, others will think, Whatever the teacher says is a Dharma teaching. Even during casual conversations or meals, your words will be considered as Dharma teachings. This is because they are accustomed to listening to your Dharma teachings and they regard even your casual conversations as teachings. This is what it means. Your words in daily life will be influential and the listeners will respect them. By expounding the Dharma, one will become fearless. The Dharma teacher will become fearless because of the blessings of the Buddhas and Buddhasattvas and the protection of the Devas and Nagas. One's mindfulness, 
insight and realization will grow, so one will become increasingly fearless. With the blessings of the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas and the Three Jewels, one will certainly be increasingly confident and fearless. The more one teaches, the more joy one will experience. By expounding the Dharma, one can attain the bliss of the Dharma and the peace of the mind. By expounding the Dharma, one will be praised by the wise and their good reputation will spread. Expounding the Dharma is so beneficial. I should have mentioned these benefits earlier. The Fully Ripened Effect According to the Four Great Masters' commentary on the Great Treatise on the Stages of the Path to Enlightenment, we need to contemplate that expounding the Dharma will yield perfect, fully ripened effects. The merit of teaching the Dharma will generate a power in one's mind. Regarding the great benefits of expounding the Dharma mentioned in various scriptures, we should generate a conviction, thorough understanding, from the bottom of our hearts. Attaining firm realization actually means attaining firm understanding. <laughs> 